Hi there, Cycle Camp here. I'm going to start off my uh, set of videos about what I bought in Tulsa uh, by talking about the two top brake uh, revolvers that I bought. I didn't have any top brake brakes in my collection and I thought it would be nice to add some. So uh, while I was out there I picked up this Smith & Wesson and this Webley. So I'm going to set the Webley aside for a minute and we'll talk about the Smith & Wesson. So this is a Smith & Wesson, uh, it's called a Safety Hammerless. And the reason it's called a safety hammerless is because of this safety bar on the back, which has to be depressed while you are trying to fire the firearm. Um, the, uh, this, I believe, from the serial number, is a Model 5, I'm sorry, Model 4. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because the Model 5s and the Model 4s, the serial numbers, it looks like they might have overlapped a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell. I've, I've been trolling the net for eh, a couple hours now. And I, I get, uh, some people say that the, the Model 4 has ended at 220,000 and the uh, 5's picked up at 220,000, but other people say that they, they ended at 220,000 for the 4's, but the 5 started at 200,000 and there might have been some overlap there. So it is, it is a little difficult to tell uh, which model this is. I personally believe that this is a phi, uh, 4. And the reason I believe it's a four is because most of the fives uh, have an integral front sight, whereas on this front sight, you can you can clearly see that there's a pin holding this uh, front sight in. Now that doesn't some of the t model fives have pin front sights, but I believe from, because of the serial number, this is a two hundred and five thousand series serial number, and with the pin front uh, front sight, I believe that this is a model four. Uh, it seems to be in fairly decent shape. Uh, of course, all the all the bluing is gone. You know, it's all just patina now. Uh, it, it the cylinder moves just a little bit, but that is mostly up here, and not as a result of the uh, cylinder stop. And when you when you do squeeze this, and it goes off, it's fairly you know it moves a little bit, but not very much at all. So I'm not sure if that's too much or not. I would have to get a gunsmith to look at it. Uh, again, because it's a safety model, and I, I have the I have the uh, hand grips disassembled for reasons you'll find out in just a moment. This is why that's flopping around. But you can see if I don't if I don't press on it, I can't pull the trigger. If I don't press on this uh, if I don't press on this safety, once I press on this safety, I can then pull the trigger and, and it will go off. Okay. So this this model five again, it's in the two hundred thousand series, and let's let's talk about some of the things that are, are wrong with it. Or right with it, I guess. Uh, first of all, the I'm going to throw that off the side for now. Uh, the ejector is working. You can see the the extractor is working, no problem there. Um, you probably can't see it with this with this uh, view. Oh yeah, I guess you can. But it's got fairly, you know, the rifling is not in too horrible a shape. You got a little bit of pitting, but not not very much. So it's in it's in fairly good shape, uh, given how old it is. Uh, and the hand is in good shape, and the, the uh, cylinder stop is in good shape. I have done some cleanup on this. Uh, not a lot, but a little bit of cleanup on, on this particular firearm. So uh, what's wrong with it? So the first thing that's wrong with it, it is missing the hammer stud nut. So there's supposed to be, there's a, a hammer stud on the inside of here. This is a, the blind side of it. There's a hammer stud in here that the hammer revolves around. And there is supposed to be a nut on the outside of this. It looks like a screw. It's got a it's got a flat head, but it looks like a screw, and that's missing. Also, if you can see it, you can see the outline of the of the, uh, the side plate, right? Well, this screw here is supposed to hold the side plate together. So this screw is also missing. Um, thirdly, it's in here now, but there's a pin right here that holds the safety the safety lever, the safety bar, and when I got it, this, this pin was missing as well. You didn't know that because when the grips were on it, it kind of held it and you couldn't see that it was missing. Now this is not the right pin, I just, I, I found myself a big oversized paper clip and I made myself a quick pin just to hold that together. But uh, that's something else I'll be looking at. Um, finally, the last thing uh, that, we, that we have are the grips. Now these grips are very unusual. Um, First of all, they're 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 wooden, which is okay, but they have two grip screws, which is not correct for this kind of gun. And also, they have these little uh, 
inserts in them that have the 5-4, and I have no idea what they mean. But I do know that these grips are not correct for this gun. Um, and the reason that you know this is because these guns were all made with grips that had, uh, the, the original grips were black plastic, and right up in this area, there would have been a, a Smith & Wesson medallion right up in here. And when you put these grips on, you will find, first of all, you can see they don't cover the frame of the gun properly, right? They're, they're, too, they're too shallow. That's the first thing. The second thing is they hang off the bottom of the butt of the gun, which they are not supposed to do. So you can see this hanging off the butt of the gun. And I'll put the, I'll put the other one on uh, to, to get a feel. And they totally, they, they, when you add the, this little extra piece that they made, because they obviously remanufactured this from something else, they cover this. They cover the bottom, the butt of the gun up, which is I don't believe is uh, uh, proper either. But in any event, these are really weird-looking grips, and somebody has broken them. Uh, they're in, they're in pretty poor shape. The if you look inside, you can see in here, this grip is all is all chewed up. And what I've done is I've gone in and re-glued some of this stuff because the uh, the escutcheon was uh, just dropping right through there. And then after the fact, I found out the reason why the escutcheon was falling out, and that is because this is the this is the correct screw for the this is the correct screw for the bottom uh, the uh, the bottom hole. And you'll see how that sits flush inside the escutcheon. You know, it sits uh, down inside there, not flush. It sits. Uh, recessed in the discussion and if it, it was in there it would re recess in that one too but this top screw first of all it's the wrong screw it's you see how it's got screw threads I don't know if you can see it but it's got screw, screw threads all the way across instead of being flat most of the way across and just threaded at the end and you might be able to tell from from the, the, the picture here but this this screw has been snapped off it's been either cut or snapped off and it's actually not long enough so what somebody did was they tried to force this to reach the other side, and when they did that, they broke out all this wood on the fire on the uh, grip. So they they totally trashed this grip. It was a really really bad job. So um, that that's the reason I didn't pay. Obviously, I didn't pay uh, you know what would be a reasonable a reasonable price for a gun like this would be about two hundred two hundred fifty dollars, uh, maybe a little bit more if it was in better sh uh, shape. Uh, finish was in better shape. I didn't pay anywhere near that much. Um, so, but what I have been able to do is I found a company that has the, uh, the nut and the screw, and I found another company that makes reproduction grips, the original plastic grips with the Smith & Wesson logos. So I've ordered all of those, and when those come in, I think I'll have a nice little piece to, uh, as a representative piece for a break top revolver. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's turn our attention to the Webley. Web, the Webley's a little weird. This isn't one of the, the more standard Webleys. This is a Webley Model 5, or Mark 5. I guess they use Mark instead of Model on these. Um, and, uh, you know, did some trolling on the web. There were two reasons I wanted a Webley. I, I specifically wanted to go get a Webley uh, on this trip. Uh, and that is because I'm collecting a service, a service revolver, a semi-automatic, a bolt action and, a, and a, an automatic battle, battle rifle from various people that were in World War II and World War I. And so the Webley was one of the ones I was interested in. And I was going to get the six, but then I found out the Webley Mark V was the standard British service revolver at the outbreak of the First World War. Uh, it was one of a series of, four, this is originally in 455 uh, caliber. Uh, Revolvers, which were the standard issue pistols, excuse me, of the British Army from about 1887 on. Uh, these were really robust and powerful guns. They gave excellent service until they were re uh, replaced by the handier Enfield Number no. Two revolver in 1932. Uh, the Mark V, it turns out, is very similar to the Mark IV. The difference is the cylinder is slightly bigger to handle modern nitrocellulose ammunition. And in fact, this firearm, the back of the cylinder, if I, if I open it up for you, the back of the cylinder, I don't know if you can see it. Let me, uh, I, I, let me get my, so I can see my screen here. So if we look at the, okay, if we look at the back of the cylinder, I don't know if you can see, there's a small lump 
around the base of the uh, where the star is for the for the uh, extractor, and that little small lump there was created by them uh, turning down the bottom of the cylinder. And the reason they did that was to allow you to use 45 ACP rounds in a moon clip. You can see it there. You can see it pretty well. You can see a little bit of a ledge right at the bottom, right at the bottom of where the star is. So basically, that's that's what's going on here. This this particular gun was in service at the start of World War One, so it, it fits that requirement for me, and it fits the requirement that I was looking for top break uh, weapons. So that was the reason that I then went after this one. Uh, this gun is in fairly good shape, uh, you know, other than the finish is awful. And if you look at the uh, if you look at the bore, I mean, the bore is great on this one. It's really got a really nice bore. It doesn't look like it's been shot very much. So the bore is really good. Um, the only problem I, I'm having with this firearm uh, is that the hand grips, which again, which, which is why I haven't taken apart, is the hand grips are loose. And apparently on this guy, they just nose in to this cut here at the, here at the back of the uh, here at the back of the frame. They nose into this cut, and then there's a there's a pin at the bottom that goes into a hole that's at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the grip. So that that pin goes in there. Well, on this grip, which other than a small crack, I did. I don't know if you can see it. There's a small crack here. Uh, other than the small crack, this one lines up pretty well, and it, it covers the gun. Uh, sorry, it covers the frame properly, and when it's set into its you know, when it's brought forward, it, it, it seeks pretty well. I can't tell if this is wood or Bakelite. It, it feels kind of like Bakelite. It's hard to tell. But it looks like it's shrunk like wood, so it's hard. To, again, it's hard to tell. So on this side, it looks pretty good. But on the opposite side, you can see that this was broken at one time, and someone tried to repair it. And they did a pretty crummy job. And also, when you put this on, you see how it doesn't quite make it? So it's almost like it's not really the right set of grips for this particular gun, because this should be this should be much up higher like this. And if you do that, of course, the bottom doesn't cover the bottom of the bottom edge of the revolver. So there's something wrong with the grips on this, but that seems to be the only real problem with it. Uh, everything else seems to work okay. Again, as on the previous, uh, the extractor seems to work just fine. So it comes up and it tracks like it's supposed to. The, uh, as we saw earlier, the bore is in really nice shape. Uh, you know, pretty pretty decent. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not too terribly uh, upset about this. Uh, the only other thing that I think that's weird is they have a really small keeper. The uh, the cylinder stop on this it just actually kind of uses a double cylinder stop because there's one you know you've got the one up here, you've got the cuts up here, and you've got the cuts out here, and these cuts are much wider than this cylinder stop. So when this thing is closed, you can move it quite a bit. But when you when you do take it and fire it, it locks up pretty tight. You know, it, it doesn't, you know, you can see it's not, not moving very much at all. So it does appear to lock up okay. Uh, it does need a little bit more cleaning. I've just done some of the surface crud. But other than that, it's in real good shape. And you can see there's the Mark IV. You can probably probably see that the Mark IV logo on the top and it's just loaded with all kinds of little Britishy uh, you know markings for different things you know uh, proof marks and service marks and things like that uh, and uh, again it has the, the uh, ring for the lanyard and all that stuff so this was the this was the second gun I bought at uh, Tulsa uh, I haven't been able to find uh, a set of grips that I like yet I'm still looking for those, but that seems to be the only thing I'm going to have to do with this one, is to find a set of grips and possibly a set of moon clips for me to uh, try shooting this with 45 ACP. Also, this th there's a serial number on the cylinder, which I'm sure you can't see very well. There it is. Okay, so you can see there's a serial number here on the on the cylinder. There's also a cylinder. There's a cylinder. Uh, there's uh, there you go. There's a serial number here on the frame. And it's all matching, so all that all that stuff is matching. There was, I think, there was one more uh, around here someplace. I just don't remember where it was. But there were there were a couple of different serial numbers on it, and all the all the places I could find that had serial numbers, the serial numbers were matching. Um, I paid a little bit more than I really wanted to for this, um, you know, given that the uh, the grips were screwed up. 
but uh, it was a good example, and it was one of the few Webleys that was actually affordable to me at all. I've been trying to buy one of these on auctions uh, for about the last year, and I can't, I couldn't even come close to it for less than $900. So I was pretty pleased. I think I paid about $500 uh, for this one. So uh, I'm, I was pretty pleased to find one. And again, I was just looking for, again, something to fill out my uh, British uh, gun series and an example of a break, a break top. So those are basically the first two guns that I bought at Tulsa. I, I bought a total of 10, including the little Daisy uh, BB gun that I, have already, that I already did a video on. Um, so I'll be showing the different guns at different times. And, uh, you know, when I get a few more minutes and start cleaning stuff up and get a chance to do a little bit more research, I'll put another gun on the table and I'll show you some more. So have a great afternoon. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, Tulsa, great place to go if you're looking for stuff for your collections. You know, you don't have to be a museum quality uh, collector. I am not a museum quality collector. I just like collecting odd and interesting guns. And I don't like spending a lot of money because I'm really cheap. And uh, Tulsa it was a great place to do that, especially on the second day when people were willing to make some deals. I didn't pay list price, uh, the ask price for any of these firearms. And uh, I, I felt pretty good about most of the purchases I had made. So, Tulsa, I'm really looking forward to going back in November if I get the chance, and uh, we'll see what happens. But this was the brake top, the two brake top guns from Tulsa here in April 2018. Thanks a lot for watching, and have a great afternoon.